You probably realize that people disagree violently on their opinions of what social justice is, and they also disagree violently on their opinions of what music is. Uh, tonight, I, uh, like any musician, am highly prejudiced, and probably like any person who thinks about the condition of the human race, I'm also highly prejudiced. And uh, with those grains of salt that you can use with anything I say, then I'll go ahead and make a batch of prejudiced statements. Whenever people feel strongly moved about anything, uh, there's a tendency for them to sit down and write poetry about it, or sometime to burst into song. And that's why we have love songs, we have religious songs, We've got war songs, songs about babies, home. There's class war songs. But tonight we're particularly uh, looking at the angle in songs. Well, it'll come out. Let me sing you fragments of several different songs. One that might have been, well, was, was known by probably every single Bostonian a few centuries ago and they called it Old Hundred. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. And this was not just a religious song, it was a song of people who had a very social uh, outlook. They believed that they were going to set up a new social order. Uh, unfortunately, their opinion of what all people consisted of was a little narrow, I think. You remember what Mark Twain said. The pilgrims first landed on their knees to thank the Lord, and then they landed on the Indians. <laughs> Here's another song. Some to think it a misfortune to be christened Pat or Dan, but to me it is an honor to be born an Irish man. Is 100 years ago, it was a popular song in many a Boston bar. <laughs> it was a song protesting the signs which were up at many a factory gate saying, no Irish need apply. Here's a song put together maybe 30 years ago. I learned it from the man who wrote it. He was a great blues singer who's dead now but he came down to sing at a hootenanny in New York in 1946. And as he said goodbye, he said, Peter, sure, had a lot of fun. I wish I could sing for you all the time, but I got to earn a living. And he said, uh, he said, I'm gonna send you a song. And a week later, on a little, he'd gone into one of these booths where it said, record your voice, 25 cents. And I received this little record he said, Pete, I can't sing this in the kind of places I work at, but maybe you can. So although I can't really play blues, I wish I could, but I can't, I will sing you Big Bill's song, or a little of it. Now listen to this song I'm singing, brother. You know it's true. If you're black and gotta work for a living, this is what they'll do. Well, if you're white, you're all right. But if you're brown, stick around. And if you're black, oh, brother. Good back, get back, get back. Now, me and a man was working side by side. This is what it meant. He was making a dollar an hour. I was making 50 cents. Well, if you're white, you're all right, but if you're brown, stick around. And if you're black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back. Now I fought for this country, I helped to build it too. Now I'm asking you, what you gonna do about the Jim Crow? If you're white, you're all right. But if you're brown, stick around. 
And if you're black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back. It's an old, old tradition. My guess is it's as old as the human race has been talking and singing. There was a book once, uh, Upton Sinclair, I think, edited it, called The Cry for Justice, and he had poems in there of <laughs> Egyptian peasants 5,000 years ago uh, complaining that the taxes were too high and there was no justice in the world. In every country, it was a tradition for poets not just to make up uh, lyrics about eternal verities, but to make up highly pointed lyrics about highly contemporary verities. In Arabia, there was a saying that when the king put a poet on his payroll, it was cutting off the tongue of the poet. I've often thought of that when the problem comes up, what do you do if you get offered a good job on television? <laughs> I've been told that this next song from Germany also originated in the peasant wars. It, there's some disagreement about that, but it's very possible that it could have. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts freely flow. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them, no hunter can trap them. No man can deny the Gedanken sind frei. No man can deny the Gedanken sind frei. Thoughts are free. This is a very accurate translation, incidentally, by Arthur Caves. The original line says, Es bleibet dabei, die Gedanken sind frei. I think as I please, my thoughts give me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to duke or dictator. No man can deny the Gedanken's in fry. Should tyrants take me and throw me in prison, my thoughts will burst free like blossoms in season. Foundations will crumble and structures will tumble and free men will cry. As I said earlier, people can have very different ideas of what social justice consists of. Today, if one was in either Egypt or Israel, one could find songs passionately convinced that they have 100% of the right as far as social justice went. Uh, you could probably find the same uh, opposing viewpoints in our own history. The thing is, we don't know about them. I've often regretted that I've never been able to find out any of the songs, never been able to learn. It's uh, something you'd have to study all your life to really learn well, to learn some of the American Indian songs. Because here was a people that fought and fought hard, but they were hopelessly outnumbered and out-techniqued. So the only songs we know about the Indian Wars uh, present the European side. But it is a fact that in 
the year 1634, the Massachusetts colony said outright in black and white print that they must exterminate the Pequot race and every squaw and every child, as well as every adult male, was exterminated, several thousand of them. I don't have any song from that period. Uh, 1725 is the nearest I can get. Very popular song in New England, 1725. Of worthy Captain Lovewell, I purpose now to sing how valiantly he served his country and his king. He and his valiant soldiers did range the woods full wide and hardships they endured to quell the Indians' pride. Oh, 16, oh, 16 verses, I wonder. They came unto this Indian who did them thus defy. As soon as they came nigh him, two guns he did let fly, which wounded Captain Lovewell and likewise one man more. But when this rogue was running, they laid him in his gore. Then having scalped the Indian, they went back to the spot. So I'm thinking, well. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin said, quote, savages we call them because their ways are different than ours. But I'm afraid he was in the minority of the country in his opinion. Well, let's see what I... There's songs like this all through our history, you know, like this Captain Lovell. Some of them are more generous. For a song I've often sung about the 1870s, I guess this would be, 1860s. I'll sing you a song, though it may be a sad one. Of trials and troubles and where I first begun I left my dear family, my friends and my home To cross the wide mountains and deserts to roam Tells how they went out to Nebraska Started traveling we, While taking refreshment we heard a low yell the whoop of Sioux Indians coming out of the dell. We sprang to our rifles with a flash in each eye. Boys, says our brave leader, we'll fight till we die. They made a bold dash and came near to our train. The arrows fell around us like hail and like rain. We shot their bold chief at the head of his band. They made a wild yell and away they all ran. It's a better song, and I tell you why. It's, it's more objective. Uh, the, uh, of the thousands of songs that made up, get made up every year, every day, I guess. Most of them, 99, 999 out of 1,000, uh, get forgotten. The few that get remembered usually are because they have some little more germ of universal objectivity in them. But we've had songs written by the conquering white race all across our country. Got the famous uh, ballad about hell in Texas. Oh, it's a very funny song, how the devil created Texas. How uh, he uh, put the cactus there. And uh, then when he finished it, he said, this beats hell. Uh, but then the last verse says, just dine with a greaser and then you will shout, I've hell on the inside as well as the out. And of course, you know, if you don't, you should, that the word greaser was a contemptuous term used by the white people of the Southwest for the Mexican-Americans. There were songs extolling the, the uh, Irish railroad workers that built the railroad to 
California, and some of them were sung at the big uh, California celebration as soon as the railroad was finished. But the tens of thousands of Chinese laborers who built half of the railroad were not invited even to the celebration. None of their songs appeared. They were coolies. They were chinks. There's Ku Klux Klan songs today, you know. A lot of you may have heard some of the freedom songs from the Negro Liberation Movement, but they're uh, Ku Klux Klan songs also. Did you ever hear this song? This was 1898, sung by American soldiers in the Philippines. Damn, damn, damn the Filipino cross-eyed kakiak ladrone and beneath the starry flag civilize them with a crag and go back to our own beloved home and i hope that any filipino people listening will pardon me I'm just trying to get at the historical situation and yet the same people who maybe have been blind in one way, fought very hard for democracy in another way, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, let law and order be the state with freedom and protection. Let all stand by the ballot box for fair and free election. Year of 1800, it was one of the campaign songs around Tom Jefferson's day. And they really were fighting hard because it was, in those days, it was customary for only men of property to be allowed to vote. And there was a big battle on for working men and people who did not own land to also be allowed to vote. Of course, they hadn't gotten so far as to think that women also might have the right to vote. They hadn't gotten so far as to think that perhaps People with dark skins might have a right to vote. Uh, nevertheless, that was a widely sung song. That thousands of them. If you go through the history books, you can find literally thousands of songs like that. Most of them are poor songs. Uh, they are editorials in rhyme. Uh, 125 years ago, I think exactly, they had one of the first abolitionist conventions here in Boston and a group of New Hampshire farm people that loved to sing came and made up a song. Oh, the car emancipation rides majestic through our nation, bearing on its wheels the story, liberty, the nation's glory. Roll it along through the nation, roll it along through the nation, roll it along through the nation, freedom's car emancipation. the year 1844. The reason is that the melody was swiped from a pop tune of the day, old Dan Tucker, and they put new words to it. Men of various predilections, frightened run in all directions, lawyers, editors, physicians, merchants, priests, and politicians, roll it along through the nation, roll it along through the nation, roll it along through the nation, freedom's car emancipation. The 1840s was also the birth of the women's suffrage movement. They had songs, but as I say, most of these songs get very wordy. They're not really good for singing, and you can dig them out of the library if you want. Temperance songs, my gosh, they had thousands of them. Uh, cold water, cold water for me. <laughs> There's nothing so pure and so free. I'll go to the brook, I'll go to the spring, and over the bubbles I'll merrily sing. Cold water, cold water, cold water, cold water for me.
warming up to my subject. <laughs> In the 1880s, uh, there was ferment in the cities and ferment in the countryside. They called it the Farmer's Alliance. Oh, the farmer comes to town with his wagon broken down, but the farmer is the man that feeds them all. If you'll only look and see, I think you will agree, the farmer is the man that feeds them all. The farmer is the man, the farmer is the man, lives on credit till the fall. And the interest rate's so high, it's a wonder he don't die. The mortgage man's the one that gets it all. Mm, I can't remember the verses of this. It was one of the eight-hour-a-day songs in the 1880s. The labor movement was just getting rolling to demand that eight hours be the standard hours of work. Six-day week, of course. Eight hours we'll have for labor, eight hours we'll have for play, eight hours we'll have for resting in free America. Oh, we're, we're brave and gallant minor boys who work all underground. For courage and good nature, no finer can be found. But as I say, it's too doggone wordy. I call them editorials in rhyme. I once was a tool of oppression, as green as a sucker could be. And Wall Street and the old party bosses teamed up on a hayseed like me. Teamed up on a hayseed like me. Teamed up on a hayseed like me. But the ticket we vote next November will be made up of hayseeds like me. <laughs> That tune, maybe some of you recognize, is one of the really great Irish melodies. It's been known in 10,000 versions. And actually, the tradition of making up songs about events of the day was strongly reinforced by the Irish people coming here because they, they'd been used to it for centuries, making up songs uh, as part of the Irish national struggle. Not that the English didn't have political ballads, too. Robin, the bobbin, the big-bellied Ben, ate more meat than three-score men, swallowed the church, swallowed the steeple, swallowed the priest and all the people. Still, his belly wasn't full. Anybody ever remember seeing the portrait of King Henry VIII with his big pot belly? You know who that nursery rhyme was directed at. It was the popular thing in the 16th century and 17th too, to make up political barbs in double talk. Robin the Bob, you know, he was taking over the Church of England. He wanted all that loot for himself. Robin the Bobbin, the big bellied Ben, ate more meat than three score men, swallowed the church, swallowed the steeple, swallowed the priest and all the people. But the Irish really had some of the uh, greatest uh, of these topical songs. I, I, tended to call them because they are on topics of the day. And as I say, that some of them were so great that they lasted far and down the generations. <laughs> Mrs. McGrath, the sergeant said, would you like to make a soldier out of your son, Ted? With a scarlet coat and a big cock hat now, Mrs. McGrath, wouldn't you like that? Would you do right up for the diddle Do right, ooh, right, ooh, right, ah. Would you do right up for the diddle Do right, ooh, right, ooh, right, ah. Hey, you know what? I've been hollering my head off all by myself. Will you help me out on that chorus? It's a silly thing. This, the Irish really loved it. You put in a lot of two right, father didn't get idol types. Ooh, it's a two raya, father diddle la. Try it. Ooh, it's a two raya, father diddle. I didn't hear you. Try it again. Ooh, it's a two raya, father diddle la. Two raya, ooh raya, ooh raya. Ooh, it's a two raya, father diddle la. Two raya, ooh raya, ooh raya. Now, after every chorus, you help me out. 
So Mrs. McGrath sat on the seashore For the space of seven long years or more Seven? We only got two, we had seven Till she spied a ship come a-sailing on the sea Hullaloo, bubbaloo, and I think it is he Would you do raya for the diddle-ah Do raya, hoo raya, hoo raya Would you do raya for the diddle-ah Do raya, hoo raya, hoo raya Oh, Captain dear, where have you been? Have you been sailing on the Mediterranean? Oh, have you any tidings of my son Ted? Is the poor boy living or is he dead? Would you ride up for the day of life? Do ride, 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 then up steps Ted without any legs, and in their place two wooden pegs. She kissed him a dozen times or two, crying, Holy Moses, it isn't you. Would you two raya, father did a lot. Two raya, two raya, two raya, would you two raya, father did a lot. Two raya, two raya, two raya. I wasn't drunk, I wasn't blind, when I left my two fine legs behind. But a cannonball on the 5th of May Swept my two fine legs from the knees away Would you two raya, father did la Two raya, raya, raya Would you two raya, father did la Two raya, raya, raya Ah, Teddy, my boy, the widow cried Your two fine legs are your mama's pride I'd rather have my son as he used to be than the King of France and his whole navy. Would you two raya, father did la? Two raya, two raya, two raya. Would you two raya, father did la? Two raya, two raya, two raya. Oh, foreign wars I do proclaim between Don John and the King of Spain. By the heavens, I'll make them rue the time They swept the legs from a child of mine The two-raya, father-dee-la, 